Gaius Marius Victorinus. Who is this guy? <laughs> you know, when you're looking at church history, the Bible is like, like, like the tip of the iceberg. Church history is, there's so much more to it. Gaius Marius Victorinus was the first one that I see in, in antiquity. And this was back in the early um, uh, 4th century, uh, 300 and something like 40s, 350s. Gaius Marius Victorinus wrote everything that I said about the Book of James. I mean, he basically, everything that, I, that, 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 that I've been speaking about has been spoken about by Gaius Marius. I really have to read his take on this book because this, my view on the Book of James, although M. Wilson says that I, I got it, I was making up stories. I'm making up stories. It's all in my imagination. Well, St. Augustine of Hippo was a huge fan of Gaius Marius Victorinus. That's right. St. Augustine would have read Gaius Marius Victorinus's commentary on the book of Galatians, which basically showed everything about James the Just and Peter and, and, and Paul. And why would this be really, really, really significant? Well, because, because when St. Jerome was basically doing a huge cover-up, trying to make a reason inside his head, and trying to put out his, his commentary on the book of Galatians, which I believe he, if he was doing a commentary on the book of Galatians, he would have read Gaius Marius. So if he would have read Gaius Marius and he didn't want, want Gaius Marius' opinion to go out there, especially since it, it was not a very big, uh, high, didn't have a very high view of James the Just, then he would have written something to try to, try to make it seem like, like, like the, the apostles did not err. So this whole issue was being, t was being looked at by the early church fathers. And so, St. Jerome made up this story that they were play-acting Shakespeare, Hamlet. It was, a, it was all staged. But if, if Augustine of Hippo had read Gaius Marius, then, then he would have made the same type of, uh, of scathing letter condemning St. Jerome's commentary. And... Um, I don't know exactly what St. Augustine's take on James is, but I can tell you that it was definitely influenced, or he definitely read Gaius Marius Victorinus, who basically said that James was a false apostle, pseudo-apostles, and that, James, that, that, that Paul had been fighting with the pseudo-apostles, men from James, all along. This is church history written by your church fathers and the early, this wasn't made up by me somewhere. This was, was, was something that was written by, by Victorinus. And if you look back to Symmachus, the Symmachians, Victorinus had said these people who were earlier than him were writing things and what they were doing was they were venerating James. They were trying to call him a 12th apostle. So since there were, there were church heresies going around trying to make James something he was not, there's good reason to believe that, that James would be venerated. Oh, what's the proof for that? Okay, well, let's take a look at, at James the just. He's the just. Do you know why he's just? Because he's more just than Jesus. He supposedly could stand in the Holy of Holies, even though he wasn't in the priestly line of Levi. <laughs> he, never had, he never took a drink. He never had any alcohol where Jesus was called a wine bibber. Okay? He was righteous from birth. When there's no one righteous, no, not one. Not even Mary. You know, this was the veneration of Mary being perfectly righteous and, and his brothers being perfect. There was only one righteous. It was the Christ. The other strange thing is that according to Victorinus, it seems very plausible that the early... The early church, the ones that wanted to go back to Judaism, would have tried to push forward James the Just since he was the brother of Jesus. According to Jewish law, he would have stepped into Jesus' feet in the priestly line. There's another, 
there's another faction here that believed that Jesus was not God himself and that he was a man that died but was a rabbi. And so these people who denied that Jesus was, um, was God in the flesh would have, uh, would have thought of James as being the next in the succession, especially in this idea of the two pillars. And you have to look that one up too. This all comes from, from false religions that were in the early church at the time. And as you go down this rabbit hole, as you start to really look at what was going on, it's vastly different from what people today see. People removed from antiquity, people who don't read antiquity, have a completely different view of what actually was going on. And so in order to get a real glimpse of what was going on, you have to understand the stoicism that was going on, the, the idea that origin was, was, was a part of this equation with Symmachus, the idea that there, were, there was, um, and I'm just bringing all this stuff up before I do my, my third installment. Oh, uh, the things that were happening uh, at the time, the late 300s, with this, w there was huge controversies going on. Um, and there was a fight with a guy named uh, Ruf Rufinus, between Origen and Rufinus. Now, if Rufinus was one of the people who got a hold of, of uh, St. Augustine's letter, he would have used it against St. Jerome. So this was a lot like YouTube. This was a lot like there was there was an awful lot of, of fighting going back and forth, especially over or the teachings of Origen and the open rebuke uh, of uh, of um, um, uh, of Saint Jerome and the and actually Saint Jerome had had parted friends with Rufinus over this. There was there was this huge Origenian idea that was looming right around the time of these writings, the late 4th century. And you really have to look at it. Take care. God bless.